Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I, uh, can we get a round of applause? Give yourself a round of applause. There is a book called Wonder. Have you guys read that book? Oh my God, I love that book so much. Now, I've never seen the movie with Julia Roberts. Isn't that crazy? But in the book, um, the famous quote is um, by Augie, I think his name is, that everybody deserves um, a standing ovation at least once in their life. And I really, really believe that. So just stand up and give yourself a standing ovation today for having just made it through today, just that you're alive today and that you have a smile on your face. And if you don't, turn that frown upside down because we're gonna have a really good video here. <laughs> See, here we go, let's get started, okay? So I brought all of my new meditation books with me um, and I forgot my <laughs> reading glasses, they're over there. I just picked them up because I was uploading another video and I forgot to bring them back over here. So today we're gonna read from the Daily Stoic, 366 Meditations on Wisdom, Perseverance, and the Art of Living. This is a number one Wall Street Journal bestseller, featuring new translations of, no, I cannot pronounce these people's names, Seneca, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius by Ryan Holiday, number one best-selling author of The Obstacle in the Way, and Stephen Hanselman. And it has a little bookmark in here, which I love. It has this little thing. So let's go in here and see December. Oh, I have something with my shirt. December twenty-first. I haven't like read any of these meditations except for to like skim through them with you guys. So let's get through here. Uh, the Daily Stoic, December 21st, what do you have to show for, for your years? Many times an old man has no other evidence besides his age to prove he has lived a long time. Seneca, on tranqu tranquility of mind, 3.8b. I don't know what that means. How long have you been alive? Take the years and multiply them by 365 and then by 24. How many hours have you lived? What do you have to show for all of them? The answer for many people is, not enough. We have so many hours that we took them for granted. All we have to show for our time on this planet are rounds of golf, years spent at the office, time spent watching mediocre movies, a stack of mindless books we hardly remember, and, re and maybe a garage full of toys. We're like the character in Raymond Chandler's The Long Goodbye. Mostly, I just kill time, he says, and it dies hard. One day, our hours will begin to run out. It would be nice to be able to say, hey, I really made the most of it. This is getting me real emotional, I don't know why. Not in the form of achievements, not money, not status. You know what the Stoics think of all of that, but in wisdom, insight, and real progress in the things that all humans struggle against. What if you could say that you really made something of this time that you had? What if you could prove that you really did live so many years, and not just lived them, but lived them fully? Ooh, I think I'm gonna like this book. Um, you know, I think that there is a, um, I actually, I need a sip of my coffee. I actually do think um, it's kind of a life slash life experience thing. Like I don't wanna talk down to anybody that's younger, but there is a day that you wake up and um, all of a sudden you realize, um, wow, I'm older, you know, like what happened to all the time? And, um, I don't know when it happened. I don't remember the day. I just woke up one day and I, and I know I felt that way. I felt like the time is gone and, um, a lot of the people have gone, have gone, you know, and I talked a lot about it on my vlog when my mom passed away and then my aunt passed away, my uncle passed away and, now s several of my friends that have been contemporaries my entire life have passed away and friends in my families and things like that, you know? And it's like, um, who knows my history? You know, I've, my husband and I have been together 12 years. My best friend, she and I, you know, have been best friends for 24 years, but I'm 48 years old. She doesn't even know my whole life, you know? Um, I mean, she does because I tell her stories and she tells me stories and stuff, but it's like, who has been there like my entire life. Now my dad and my stepmom, you know, obviously are still around, which is great. And I'll, you know, joke with them about stories from the past and things like that. But I think as you get older, you start to realize I don't have much time left, you know? 
I don't know when I was in my 20s or my early 30s that I really felt that pressed for time. I don't know that I felt like, um, you know, that we were, like I would say it because my mom would say it to me all the time. She'd say, you know, we're on borrowed time. And, and whenever I say that, people are always like, what does that mean? Well, borrowed time basically means that we all have an expiration date. You know, like my sponsor says that to me. She's like, Peter, we all have an expiration date, you know? Like you have to remember that. Are you living your life to the absolute fullest? And I think it's a question we have to ask ourselves every day. I think doing things like practicing gratitude really help with that. But I want to look back on my life, you know, whenever that moment comes, or even just today, I want to look back on it and be able to say, I've really spent my days fully. I've really had some great times. And I have, you know, I really have. But like the reality is... I don't know that I really started living until just the last couple years. I think like, this is like one of the saddest things, but like, I think I really started living when my dog Pee Pee got sick, which people were like, why a dog, you know? I don't know why that was it. Um, I just think that he was this thing that I loved so unconditionally and, um, and I'm real emotional because we're like, literally like a week away from the day, you know, that he passed away last year. But um, I just loved him so unconditionally. He just was like such a huge part of my life, you know, and I would wake up every day and have to take him out with Boo and Tucker and Boo would follow him around. And, you know, I still have Boo and Tucker, obviously, but like when PB got sick, I think that I knew like this picture that I had because I got to this point in my life where I was like really happy. Our marriage was like where I wanted it to be and we had gone through hell, you know, and our marriage was happy and I had friends around me that I loved and I had this, I had a home that I loved and I just loved my existence. And, um, and then PP got sick and what I realized was that there was going to be a day when my life no longer looked like that. There was going to be a day when Pee Pee wasn't here and Boo wasn't here. Tucker wasn't here, you know? And that this picture of what I had like gotten so used to and so comfortable with that one day wasn't going to look like that anymore, which that's reality. That's life, right? But I think that was the moment that I started like really, really appreciating life. And I can remember I would like walk in the backyard and I would just, I would let the dogs just walk for like ever. Like, you know, I just kept the back door open and I would go in and out doing stuff and they'd just be out there for like, you know, a half an hour or so. And, um, and I just really started appreciating every little moment. So what, 45 years old? It took me till I was 45. I mean, I had moments of that throughout my life because I was lucky enough and blessed enough to be raised by family and my dad and my stepmom and my mom, you know, that really appreciate small things and the moments and like the moments and all that, you know? The other thing is I can remember a couple years ago, Tanya and I would find ourselves retelling moments from the past, you know, from friends of ours that have now moved to other places or are not in our lives anymore. And I can remember, it's, it literally used to be like every night, it'd be like six or eight of us out on Tanya's patio with, you know, big, the, the bonfire going and we just st sit out there with fountain pops and talk for hours. And then it became like last summer, the summer before, it was just Tanya and I, you know, and I can remember we were sitting out there one day and I said something about, cause she used to joke about the ghosts of the patio. And she said, um, yeah, she's like, I don't want to sit and just focus on all the things from the past anymore. She's like, I want to make, I'm ready to make some new memories. And I think that's really about, uh, like getting to that point in life where you appreciate and you love your life for what it is, but you're ready to make some new memories too. And not just sit in the past, you know, not just sit in the, what could have been or how it was, you know? And today I will say like, I, I really stop several times throughout the day. And I really, really appreciate just the moment that I'm sitting in, you know? Um, and it's like, like last night, like I was vlogging and I drove around and I was looking at like, you know, Christmas tree lights. And afterwards I drove around a little bit more and looked at some Christmas lights and, um, you know, just listening to my audiobook or laying in bed and just looking at how Tucker just like gets up in the morning and he like perks his little head up and he like looks around, you know, and just noticing little things about all of them, you know? And, and I think that's what it's about. And I think that in the end, when I look back, it will be about those small moments. I think those small moments will be what jointly makes this amazing life that I've had. So I want to each day appreciate each of those moments. I think this is going to be a fantastic meditation book. I'm really excited about this. And um, 
It's called The Daily Stoic, so I will be reading from this and these other ones for this next year. So if you want to um, join along with those, you can purchase these or you can just listen to them every single day. I haven't really looked much at the making of Miracles in 40 Days by um, Melody Beatty yet, so I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna, um, if we're gonna do this or not. So we'll see, there's another one called um, a Year to Live by Stephen Levine. I'm thinking about maybe doing that one too. So I'll pull that one down and look at it and we'll do something. We'll pick some book. So anyway, wow, what a great meditation. I have my uh, literature meeting tonight and um, that was a good meditation for today. So anyway, I love you. I love things that make me feel, you know, that make me feel some kind of emotion and pull that emotion out of me. It makes me feel alive. And um, I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.